from eye-catching colors and designs that stand out in the crowd. To an unparalleled soft and cozy feel unlike any other. From warmth and security for life's adventures and milestones. To crafting a lasting legacy shared between generations. We bring comfort, joy, and happiness to life's most magical moments. With the softest, highest quality plush fabrics on the market and through the difference we make at home and in our communities. Shannon Fabrics, making the world a softer place for over 25 years. Hi, everybody. Uh, hey, Cheryl, can you switch my camera? Sweet 16 camera. Hi, everybody. There we are. Hey, this is Hawk. We are here at Pins and Needles in Middleburg Heights, Ohio. Welcome back to the new season of Sew Together Tuesday with Teresa Coates on the road. Where's Teresa? I think she's there. <laughs> We're back. We're back. We have been off the road now for eight weeks or something. We did a bunch of lives over the summer, some uh, some re-recorded ones that showed you some basics. But we are back. We are back in shops, and we are here at Pins and Needles. I think I heard you say that, right? We're at Pins and Needles in Middleburg Heights, Ohio. We're very excited to be here. So let's go in and see the store, okay? All right, come on. Let's do this. So this is pretty close to where we were for a while. And this is um, one of the three shops that we have. Okay. Hi, Jan. Hey. Hi, everyone. This is Jan. She's the owner of Pin Needles. So tell me a little bit about your store and how you got here. Well, I will tell you that I try to make it a Disneyland for my, for my <laughs> customers. 
That's so a good way of doing that's it. That's the way I tell everybody we do it. I mean, they got to come in and have fun. Right, right. When they get to come in here, it's like away from everything else. So we're a full sewing machine dealer. We sell the baby locks, the brothers, the bananas, the pops. <laughs> you have all of them. Got it. So whatever you've got, so you sell them new, used, all that good stuff. But we also teach. Uh -huh. That's the trick. Yes. And we service. Got so it. Five mechanics in the back. All of them. All of them. Can live a ways away. I can do one day. Just give me a call. That's awesome. All right. So let's. Hey, see we're here. having some audio issues. Are we? I'm wondering if it's probably because of that. It could be. Is it? Is it making some feedback sounds? Yeah. Yeah. Like that off. Turn the TV off. Yeah. Let's uh, let's walk this way. We'll get away from the machines too. Okay. Okay. It's a lot of electronics. It's a lot of electronics. Once we get over to the other side, we should be all right. Okay. We'll give it a shot. Talented staff. It's awesome. So you guys do a lot of classes, which is partly why we ended up here because you guys have a ton of classes. Let's go inside. See this classroom space. This. this is amazing. <laughs> so come on over here. Thank you. This is so great to be here. So your shop is huge. Because we just did a little walkthrough and saw like she has all of this stuff over there with the machines, the fabric, and the huge sewing space over here, which is kind of a dream. We can put five classes in here at one time, and it's we insane. have quite often. It's insane. So you guys do classes all the time. All the time. Yeah, that's crazy. So if people want, are interested in going to your classes, do you offer any that are online or they're all in store? We also have a program called Sewed Online, Got it. which is our online school, and we have about 400 classes okay, on there. Okay, still feedback. We're gonna, we're gonna do something. We're gonna. Okay, guys, I hear you. Let's see what we can do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> figure it out. for a minute. Okay. You. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're trying to figure out the audio. Okay. Okay, I have to show this and then okay, okay, just try soloing back to our camera. There, there we, we go. go. All right, let's see what let's see if we got it this time. We'll right. try it again. Got it this time. Do we need to run all the way back to the RV? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I'm not gonna do it. I won't, but I will make her talk more. Okay. Better. Okay. Think we're better. We're good. Maybe that's better. Okay, we got it. All oh right. my goodness, it's always one thing or another, you guys. Seriously. It's just entertainment for all of them to see. That's right. Exactly. Room. Exactly. So we'll cut that up part off the live. All right. <laughs> and now that. we're here with Jan, who is the owner of Pins and Needles. So tell me again about your store a little bit so people could hear it better. So you we have all this sewing space. You've got the classes, and then tell us about your online thing that you do. So we have Sew It Online, and Sew It Online is an online school that really my sons. And we have a lot of classes on there. But my goal when I started this, and it's my 50th year selling sewing machines. Wow. Nice. But when my husband and I started Pins and Needles 30, 35 years ago, we brought our daughter to work with us because we couldn't afford anything. Right. But, right. right. Yeah. And I had to teach classes at eight in the morning because otherwise who was going to run the store? That's right. how it, but I knew that I couldn't afford anything <laughs> advertising. Uh -huh. So my goal was if you learn to love your sewing machine, yep. that's how you make it. Yeah. And that's how we built it. That's very and cool. That on a daily basis. That's what. So you have three locations. You have this one that we're here in Middleburg Heights, which are, they're all in the Cleveland area, we correct? Have closed one now. Closed okay. Closed our Mayfield store, so okay. we are now sold online. We Got will it. be back in Mayfield. Okay. Cool. It was a rent issue. 
Got it. Five times the rent just wasn't worth it. It happens. Right. So, but they're coming over here. It's so come here. So this is a suburb of Cleveland, right? Yes. We didn't make it quite to Cleveland. So I don't, I don't know where I'm at. I'm somewhere in Ohio. <laughs> All right. So that's where we at. That's where she has her big store here with lots and lots of classes, lots of fabrics, lots of machines, all that good stuff. All right. Are we good? Are we still hearing yeah. everything? All yeah, right. We're doing great. Okay. So where do they find you? We're at 7300 Pearl Road in Middleburg Heights, Ohio. There we go. And they we're can find you online. Needles.com. And I really want you to check out sewedonline.com. There are so many classes on there. I've done one that's 18 of them that's just says beyond the basics. I will blow everybody. So sometimes you have to the wrong title because people think we already know it. Yeah. There you go. So check it out. So it um so our pins and needles dot com and so on so it online. So those are the two websites. Instagram. Yeah. All of those good us. things. Yeah. So get involved in sewing. We've got a lot of young kids sewing. Mm -hmm. We got the kids sewing, the teenagers. I've got 16 year old boys in here, of course, with the 16 year old girls. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't know each other, but I think that class it's is a, going to continue. It's a great place to meet. I absolutely agree. And yes, there's people that have become friends in here mm -hmm. and didn't know each other until yeah. they came in here. That's yeah. the joy of it. All. And that's to me, that's the joy of sewing as a hobby. So, so you our sound is bad again. Our sound is bad. Yep. Again. All right. So I'm not sure what the oh, I'm, I'm gonna go over here and take a look. Okay. Do you want me to turn I'm gonna turn off my mic? Sorry, I'm like Hi. Let's 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 show that for a second while I look at the camera. Do you want me to hold it? Um I think we're all right. Let's see. So interesting. Everything should be <laughs> Yeah, I know. You're welcome, everybody. There's a delay, so. Okay. Yeah, so I have. <laughs> okay, I've got my mic back on. All right, so we're going to. Cheryl says it's better now. So we're going to go with that and hope that me turning my mic on and off. You d did yours on and off over there, so. It's better. Okay. Okay. It's clear again. We're, we're good. We're going to go with All right. that. All right. Thanks. Let's do this project, see if we can get through it, guys. Okay. <laughs> Thank All right. you. We got you. Thank you. So what? <laughs> Thank goodness. I tell you, I am so grateful though for everybody online and everybody in the store. Like, thanks for your patience and dealing with it. Technology, as I have said from the very beginning of Sew Together Tuesday, is a thing, and it is not always so easy. We try. And things go a little sideways. So we're going to try it today. We are doing the Sweet 16 pillow. Um, will you let me know if things come up again? We're doing great. Okay. What is this the pillow? So is this is the that... pillow. This is the Sweet 16 pillow. And it is a fun little pillow that has been a um, project that we've had online um, as a pattern for a while. And I really like this one because it's a great scrap buster. And it lets you also coordinate fabric. So we want to talk a little bit about coordinating fabrics because one of the things that uh, everybody I kind of, I think kind of struggles with is in quilting and sewing in general is you find a print that you really like and then you're like, what goes with it? Um, so that's sometimes an issue. So for me, I started with the cupcake fabric and I wanna show you how I found the fabric. So let's see if we can put up our little thing. There it is, okay. Should I move in? There we yeah. go, okay. Good. Which way, pointing uh, the other way? That way. There we go, there. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard when it's backwards and on the screen. So on here, you can see this is the print that I had. Okay, so this is the print that I chose that I wanted to use. And down at the bottom there where I was trying to point are the coordinating colors. And this is available on almost all of our prints that are on shannonfabrics.com. So if you go there and you go to the print section and you find the print that you like, you can find all of the colors that then go with it. So that's what I did. And I looked for the colors. There should be a Paris pink, right? Is there a watermelon? I can't. A snow. Them, so. <laughs> those colors should be in there because that's what I chose. I can't look at the screen while I'm talking to you guys. So yeah. um, those are the colors that I picked. You can absolutely do the same thing. So once you find those colors, then you get to pick other things to go along with it. And I'll show you the other fabrics that I chose. So let's go over to the ingredients list and we'll go through that. Okay. So the ingredients for this project, we have the Sweet 16 Pillow Pattern, which you can, is a free download that you can get from our website. I have 16 6 by 6 squares. So it doesn't matter which size squares you use. This is what I use today. This is what's in the pattern, but you can use any size squares. With polyester filling or a 15-inch square, 
pillow insert, 9014 stretch needle, which is really important that we're using a stretch needle, okay? We'll talk about that a little bit more. Polyester thread, because we're using polyester fabric. I'm using it from Mettler Metrocene. You want a felt tip marker or ballpoint pen, rotary cutter and mat, macro serrated scissors and a craft knife. I forgot to put in there, we want a ruler, obviously. Long flower head pins, I'm using them from Clover. Fabric clips and a stiletto from By Annie, which will show you how I use that. And my walking foot, all right? So that's what we need to make this project today. So I have a couple of variations on it that I wanna show you first, and then we'll get into the fabrics more, okay? So let's show these two variations, all right? So this one I used four fabrics, this one I used three fabrics. Okay, so this one I have my print, which is Sweet Tooth. There it is, Sweet Tooth Digital Cuddle. And then I have the Hide, Lux Cuddle Hide in Watermelon. I have the Cuddle Dimple in Paris Pink and the Sparkle Cuddle in Snow and Silver. Oh, there's the fourth one. There it is. Okay, so this one I used all four of them. This one I decided to keep out the Sparkle and I just used all of the... Um, the digital or the yeah the digital cuddle the sweet tooth okay so you can do it either way we're going to lay it out this way but i wanted to show you if you want to choose it differently we'll actually show both okay so those are the fabrics that i used um let me grab my fabric so i have a whole bunch cut up here for you all right so this is a great scrap buster like i said or it's a great one that'll go with a blanket that you've already made so if you've made a big um blanket for someone and you have a digital cuddle that's left over and you could cut four five inch squares or six inch squares out of it then you could find three other fabrics or two other fabrics that go with it okay you could actually do it um, with two fabrics then you would need eight squares of each and then it would just be a checkerboard so there's lots of variations with it I really recommend trying different textures so that's what I did with this one is I picked a print I picked the dimple I picked a luxe and then I picked the sparkle because kind of a sucker for the sparkle okay all right, so in the pattern, I'm gonna show you a little bit here. So in the pattern, it shows you some ways to lay it out. Where can they find that pattern? Uh, at shannonfabrics.com. Yeah. And on the blog? And on the blog, yep. Right. Go visit the blog and you can find the pattern and all sorts of more information about it, okay? So it shows you how to lay it out. This is the way to do it with the four fabrics. If you wanna do it otherwise, you can you know, figure out your own way of doing it, but this is how we did it for this, okay? So what I have is I have my different fabrics and I'm going to lay them out like this. Let me see. Try to remember how I do it. Yep. Just like that. Okay. We go here and they'll end up going in the same order every time. Okay, and you can see I'm not caring about the nap right now because I just, oh, you know what I didn't do? Tell them to share because I got so distracted by the audio. Oh, yeah? Go share the video. You'll be entered to win. We give away a beginner box. <laughs> so here's the beginner <laughs> box. Okay, cool. Okay, so if you, if you share the video, you'll be entered to win. We'll give away this at the end of it, at the end of the show today. Okay, so I'm just laying these out. Do, do, do. Okay, nope, not there. This goes, nope, here. Where I did it. Uh, it's a puzzle. It is totally a puzzle. What am I doing? Help me. Okay. So we're just going to lay these out. I started talking about other things and got distracted. It happens every time. And are you paying attention to the, will you be paying attention to the nap? I will. So the way that I do this is I just lay the fabrics out first. Okay. So I should have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, sweet. so, <laughs> so I have two and two, and then I have the four in the middle here. Okay. So the way that I like to do it, and I have to like visually just kind of check that I have them in the right, that I do them in the same order. So like it's cupcakes and hide, cupcakes, hide, cupcakes, hide, cupcakes, hide. Okay, so that's how I work it in my brain because it's really hard. I have these extras, which makes it a little more confusing for me. Okay, at this point, then I'm going to start petting my naps because I just put them down there. So they're going to go all sorts of ways. So I feel that's upside down. That's right. 
Okay. So with the dimple, I know that it just goes, uh, it's going to go one way and I can kind of tell on that one. The digital, it's a little harder. The audio is bad again. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, guys. I, I, can't, I can't tell you. We, we're using the same gear that we've always used. I'm going to turn my mic all the way okay. off. So I'm not going to play anymore. No playing. Okay. Okay. We'll see if that works any turn better. Turn yours off and back on again. Okay. Let's see what happens. <laughs> all right okay all right let's give us a give us a check okay check 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 okay let's give it a try we'll see all right i'm gonna keep petting fabric okay because we'll, we'll, that okay. makes me feel better if i just keep petting the fabric <laughs> okay okay some of them so this is interesting like i'm petting this one it's pretty hard to find like if i pet it i can barely get a little spot there that is wrong okay so keep keep petting because there's going to be a way so you're going to get all of your naps going in the same direction then we're going to piece these into sections all right so you're going to lay it out then find the nap i want you to remember too that when we're finding the nap remember that the dimple is going to seem like it has more stretch because of the dimples in it okay so it seems like it stretches both way this is actually the only way it stretches you can see it stretches a lot but that's because of the dimples that's why this Seems like it stretches because it's trying to flatten those dimples. Okay, so right. make sure that's the only one that's going to be a little bit weird. It's not um, that the actual fabric is more stretchy; it's that it the, has the three-dimensional dimples exactly that are trying to flatten. Okay, okay. Also, I talked to somebody about this the other day. They were like, "Oh, I made something with the cuddle dimple," and then they said, "Did you know it irons out?" And I said, "I did." Did you know that you can wash and it'll come back? And they didn't. So now you know. Okay. <laughs> So <laughs> she threw her project away. Don't do that, <laughs> okay? The cuddle dimple, it will totally come back if you wash it and dry it again. All those dimples will pop right back up again, okay? But they will iron out if you decided to use it as an um, applique, all right? So we're going to get all of these in the right order. I want to show you just really quickly how it can look different if we use the other one. So I'm going to take these out. Let me see if I have enough. I have I'm going to say that and then I don't have all of them. Let's see, one, two, three, four. So if I switch these around, so I could do them here. Oh no, I want to do it this way. That's what I want to do. Sorry, I'm thinking in my brain. Okay. I mean, I don't know where else we think, but you know, just thinking here. Okay, so what ends up happening is I am missing one of them, darn it. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that's one there. Okay, but what I want you to do is I want you to notice that when we are gonna put this together, when we start looking at it, this right here, so if we divide the end of this one, shoop, here is our square. Oh, because you cut it on the diagonal. Okay, so we're piecing it as a square and it's gonna get put together on the diagonal. So that's important to remember how these are gonna look. So like these are somewhat directional, but not really. Like I just made sure that when I put them on there, I tried to get, I tried to cut them so that they would go on there the way I wanted you, them you to. Fussy, fussy them. I fussy cut a little bit. Got it. Um, but make sure that this center part is your center part here. So when you're looking at it, that's what you're getting. So this bottom part, okay, these are these parts here these squares okay when you're looking at it just take that middle part and figure out that they, that's what I want my front to look like all right okay so now we're going to take these up I feel like that was a game of like a, what's that game that you play with kids like you put it one side and they have to remember which was on the other memory, memory games that's I feel like that's what I'm like where did this go yeah you couldn't remember memory. I couldn't remember anything <laughs> yeah well, are you making fun of me no ma'am no, ma <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't have a mic anymore. So. <laughs> He's making oh, fun man. of me. Okay, all right. So here is my piece that I did before. All right, so I laid it out. Here I've got my other pieces. So I've got some of this, obviously, pieced together that we're going to work through it. All right, so I'm going to lay this out the way that I would. Can I ask a general cutting Question. Yes. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about cutting. We didn't. But more, there's the, the, a question came up 
will this shed does it continue to shed does the does the fiber show up in your sewing machine how do you okay. how do you fix that yeah so if you are new to sewing with cuddle one of the questions so over the summer we had our summer shorts and one of those is all about cutting fabric so i definitely recommend that you go watch it but to answer basic questions about cutting it any of the flat cuddle is what I call it. I cut with a rotary cutter. So the cuddle dimple, the sparkle, the print, I cut all of those with a rotary cutter. It will have an initial shed where you will lose some of the fibers. It's not very messy at all. Okay. The Lux cuddle has a longer nap. And so those there, and it's, they're finer fibers in my opinion. So like you end up having a little bit more mess, but there's a lot of ways, there's several ways that we can combat that. Okay. One of them is to cut them with the blade. If you watch the video or watch any of the other ones, we'll talk about it. Um, you can cut it with a rotary cutter and you can see a bunch of these. I did. I just cut them with a rotary cutter. If you come in here, you can see because the edges are just cut. I just cut them with the rotary cutter and then I vacuum the edges and, um, and then I can throw them in the dryer with a wet washcloth and, um, and then it will knock off all of that cuddle dust. Okay. So that's the important part is you get that cuddle dust off before you start sewing. Okay. And that's, to me, that's the most important part of it because you don't want to keep that cuddle dust on and then get it into your machine because that's when it will mess up your machine. All right. And that's because people will cut it and then take it straight to their machine. Don't do that. Okay. Get rid of the mess first. It will have an initial shed when you cut it. After that, it won't keep shedding. All right, some of the Lux Cuddle will kind of lose a little bit of fiber while you're sewing with it, and then it will be done. Especially if you wash and dry it, it'll be fine, and it won't keep losing any fibers, okay? Not, not like some of the cheaper stuff. So the good stuff, which is the Shannon Fabrics Cuddle Minky, won't keep shedding, all right? Does that answer that question? It totally did. It probably was more than you wanted to know, but I love talking about it. Okay. So, and you can see as I'm working with this, it's not leaving a mess everywhere because I got rid of that initial shed, all right? So I've got it laid out. We're gonna pretend that these are just the blocks, okay? I laid them out in the order that I wanted them. Now I'm gonna start sewing them. I'm gonna move these out of the way. We're gonna do it bit by bit. So we're gonna totally piece a row at a time, all right? So I've gotten this, these two are sewn. Now I'm gonna sew these two together. I left these because these are a little bit, uh, squirrelier to sew because this one is thick and this one is thin. All right. So when we have different lengths of nap, it can affect how it sews. So you can see probably the difference between those two. Okay. The Lux Cuddle Hide is much thicker. It's a 10 millimeter nap. And the Digital Cuddle, I think, is a three or maybe a two. Um, but I think it's a three millimeter nap on the Digital Cuddle. And so these two don't jive completely all right so they will move a little bit i like to keep the squirrelier one on top all right that doesn't always work for me and sometimes i have to move it to the bottom but generally i start with the one that wants to move more on top so that would be cotton too i'll put cotton on top and the lux cuddle on bottom all right and that's because the feed dogs will help keep it where i want it to be and i can control the top okay so i'm going to go ahead and it's the same way that we always do with cuddle is I'm going to pin on one side. I'm going to pin on the other because I want these two ends to stay where they are. All right. So I'm going to pin this and pin this because if I start pinning here and I pin across here, I'm going to push this. And then pretty soon we have a little bit of a loop there and we don't want that. So we want to make sure that it's not going to get pushed at all. Okay. So I'm going to pin parallel now. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to pin one more over here, okay? So now I've got this double pinned, and I'm going to pin, I'm going to sew right along here with a half inch seam allowance on my machine, all right? Mm -hmm. Are we ready? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. I'm going to move these pillows out of the way, okay? So we can see them and see how pretty they are. But then also move over here. Okay, so I what have, is this machine? <laughs> I Whoa, what's going on? I have a new machine. So I have it's a uh, Bernina B590. This one is a fancy one. It will do embroidery later. So in a couple of shows, we're gonna do some embroidery on here too. But for now, I'm just learning this machine. So we're gonna go with that and hope it works out fine. <laughs> so I'm gonna set it to a three millimeter stitch length. Okay, and I've just got it on a straight stitch. I'm using, like I said, my Mettler uh, Metrocene thread, which is a polyester thread. 
important to use when you're working with cuddle and especially with this pillow because we're going to really we're going to sew stretchy to stretchy and not stretchy to not stretchy which means some side some sides are going to stretch a lot so right now and if you sew with cotton thread if you sew i want to make sure it's fabric with cotton thread if you're just going to break it, the, the, the threads are just going to break. We are. And I just flipped those over and I didn't check my stretchy to stretchy. So we're going to repin real quick. Okay. So this is my nap going this way, which is what it should do. This is my stretchy this way. I pinned it so the stretchies were together. And that's not what I want. Okay. Okay. There we go. Lots of lots of layers to sort of, you know, plan for. Plan ahead. Right. I like just grabbed a couple of corners and pinned them. So that's why we lay it all out, check the nap, get those together. Then they'll be stretchy to stretchy and not stretchy to not stretchy. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Oh, okay. So if you it's because I jumped you, a step. If you check the nap, this you will have it. Stores itself out. Yes, Got exactly. It. Okay. It's just because I jumped between the two that I messed myself up. Hey, but you caught it before you sewed it. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> All right. Who knows what that pillow would have turned out like? All right. It's <laughs> soft. It's true. <laughs> All right. So I have my walking foot on here. I've got my Bernina walking foot. I'm just using the edge of my foot. So most people have a walking foot that looks something like this. All right. So if you kind of come down, you can see it has this, the big booty thing on here. Okay. Most walking feet have this. So it, when, if you've watched it before with the um, baby lock, it looks different. All right. But this is how it is. The edge of this is about a half an inch. Here's my line on my machine okay so come straight in front of me we'll see if we can show it okay there we go now i'm going to put the foot down so do you see where the foot is compared to my stiletto so here is let me get it right on there again there's my half inch okay so it's just past the foot but what happens when you're sewing with cuddle is it kind of likes to move around and do its fun little things so i just sew it so that i can barely see the edge come out from underneath that foot so let me show you so when I put it in here, I'm going to lift my needle if I can. So we're talking about a half inch seam allowance. And you don't have to be yeah. as precise with cuddle as you would be with quilting cotton. Exactly. So yeah. I'm going to get this in here. I'm going to take my pin out because I don't want it to get stuck in there. So here is my edge. I'm going to put my foot down again. And you see how it just pokes out the side here? Yes. Okay. So that part right here, this is what I want to do. I can see that this actually lines up really nicely on my half inch, but this half inch line is really hard for me to see while I'm sewing. So I keep my eye on this to make sure that my fabric is on there. Okay. okay. So that's just an important little thing to remember that that's how that works. Okay. So I'm going to see if I can backstitch here. Okay. So you started in, you backstitch. I started in, I backstitch, I go back to the edge. I'm going to keep my little stiletto here. What and I'm going to keep this. So this is my favorite. <laughs> this is my favorite stiletto. We'll get it under the light. Um, so this is the By Annie stiletto. And I love it. It is sandblasted here. So it's a little rough. You'll see how I use that in a second. But I like this because I can kind of keep this in place. So as I'm sewing it, I want to keep this flat as it goes underneath the foot. Okay, and as long as I do that, it's no big deal. I'm going to take the second pin out. This one you can see is still in, and I'm just going to sew right next to it so that it's... Um, I'm going to work on the light. A go for bit. it. Go for it. Is there a way to, to dim the light um, on the machine a little bit? Is there, Are there different to, lighting settings on this oh, machine? Oh, probably. Uh, do I know how? No. no. Okay. Oh. I told you I just got this machine. I know. Let's figure it out together, everybody. <laughs> okay, that's not what I wanted. I want... Settings, maybe? Yeah. How about looking at what we're doing? Yeah. Nope, no, that's not that's it. That's not it. Uh, not the know, stitching. I'm, Embroidery, I'm here's the, the machine. Oh, there's a light bulb. There we go. Let's take it down to like 50% and see what happens. Try the whatever that other thing is, too. That Next didn't one, do it. Try the one below. Maybe try the... Oh, that, that's... Yeah, that was it. That was it? That was it. Try, yeah, good. That's better, I think. Okay. All right. I feel like we're going to be less blown out. Okay. And that's what we want. So I'm just going to keep using my stiletto and just kind of feeding this under. Oh, what I was saying is this pin. You can see this. This is why I like flower head pins. Okay. Do you see the flower head pin? It's stuck underneath the walking foot over here. It's not going to hit my needle. I can see that because it's clear over here. 
so I can slide right over it. And then it keeps my cuddle all in position and it's not going to slide at all. So that helps it so it can't keep growing, which is a place that people have a lot of issues with. So I can see here, there's some, some lift here because this is shorter than this. So all I'm gonna do is flatten it out and just sew it right down. Don't let that get away from you. Yeah, exactly. So if it starts to build up, you need to stop and reposition things because if it gets away, you're in trouble. Okay, then you got to like, not really trouble, but you got to take stitches out. And that to me is kind of the worst thing ever. Okay, I forgot this has a fancy thing that if I hit this button, look at that. What, what did it do? did a little lock stitch and then cut my thread for me. Oh, that's uh, la -da. Seems like it's taking all the fun <laughs> out of it. Yeah, that's great. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so now we've got that. So I've got my pieces together. All right. So now did I put this together right? We're gonna see. Goes here. Let's go here and here. Now I'm like, I don't know, I'm gonna have to lay the whole thing out again. Sheesh. <laughs> Whew. Yep, there we go. Okay. Whew. I know because my cupcakes all go in a row now. Yes. That was an Oregon thumb. <laughs> <laughs> as to the, the Ohio film. exactly yeah. all right so I know those work so I'm going to pin these together all right so again all my naps you saw I checked them this time yeah. now I'm going to pin these so I'm going to I'm going to sew this this way and we're going to see if there's any issues because like I told you I normally like to sew it with my digital cuddle on top and my lux on the bottom I'm going to sew it with the lux on the top and see what it does okay and I'll let you guys know if it does anything silly on me so i'm gonna do the same thing i'm gonna pin the corners okay i'm gonna pin the edge and these are my little clover uh flower head pins all right and the clover ones are the ones that i like best they are nice and strong and work really well for this so when we've been shopping for clover flower head pins in stores mm -hmm. there are three different weights of uh, thicknesses or stiffnesses of the needle part there right? are indeed so there are um yeah three different kinds so there's a lightweight kind a medium weight kind and a heavyweight so the ones that i have here this is a heavyweight and you'll see it doesn't really bend okay can't really get that Very thing to bend. little bending. Okay. This one is a medium weight, I'm pretty sure, because, yeah, it has the two colors. So when we get there, I'll and show the, you that one. And the lightweight one has two colors of blue head, right? Or it's, this, it's exactly. the same it's blue. It's, it's two different colors, one on each side. And yep. those are the lightest weight ones, and they are actually not great They're for cuddle. They're terrible for cuddle. Um, they are made for lightweight fabrics. So, like, a... Um, if you were using like organza or a silk or something like that, they'd be perfect for that because they're lightweight. They're a tiny needle. So when they go in, they don't puncture any holes in your fabric. They're wonderful, but they also bend with this heavy fabric. So here's the medium weight or the yeah medium weight ones. You see how much that bends? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll show you again on this one because I know it's a heavy weight if I can get it. Okay. So these just don't bend. So these are the ones that I prefer, especially if I'm doing uh, things that are very thick. So if I'm doing a strip quilt or something like that, these are the preferred. These are good for most cuddle projects because they're a little bit heavier. They still have a little bit of flexibility and you can buy these on a card with 20 of them on there. I believe these I buy in a box that have a hundred. So there you go. And I know that they have the box ones here. I saw them because I considered buying more. And then I was like, you probably don't need more pins, but maybe, <laughs> maybe. All right. So now do all my petting, make sure my fabrics are in the same. All right. So this point, now we get to match our corner. So if you're a quilter, you know, this is like our favorite part, right? <laughs> Matching corners. <laughs> yeah. The, our favorite part. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So it's not really my favorite part. But it works okay with cuddle and the reason is because it has some fluff to it so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open these up and i'm going to pin them together okay so, so you're not just starting in the corners and working your way nope through. you're focusing on the seams first i'm going to get these seams to match up as much as i can i'm going to open them up and i kind of um push the top layer back a little bit because we have 
one nap is coming down and one is coming up. So right now they are opposite of each other, what do you which mean is pushing the top layer back a little bit. Just like this. Sorry. That's you okay. There. Yep. This is how that happens. So they don't want to play nicely together because they are different naps. So this is how they'll want to sit. So I just have to move it and pin it there. And that's what I'll do. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to do here. See how I pinned it and it's already off a little bit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my point is, don't worry, it will do that, but try to be careful. You know, you just do your best and see what happens. It really is pretty darn forgiving. So, all right. So now this one, we're going to match up as well as I can. Also, with those seams where the Lux Cuddle is, you just fluff up the Lux Cuddle and it will totally hide all of your mistakes. So there you go. <laughs> There's the inside scoop. How do you get it so perfect? You fluff. Okay. All right, so now I'm doing this thing where I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a pin over here, and then you're gonna see I'm going to push this back. Cause see how much that wants to be up. Oh, I, okay. Now I understand what you meant. Right. So I just you push have to this force back. Force them to line up. So I'm gonna push that back. Those edges are now even, and I'm gonna pin this here. Tell it who's boss. You tell it who's boss exactly. Cause you see here, see how this wants to go up. The back is way down there. Okay, so if I just pin this here where it wants to be, it's totally off. All right, so you have to take the time to kind of push these back, put them where you want them to be, and pin it in place, all right? Got so it. it's just, it's really not extra time consuming. It only is if you don't do that and then you have to go back and repin everything. With Cuddle, do you always sew the seams open? Um, I often do, okay? So I often sew with my seams open just because of the... Um, the sheer thickness of it. So for me, it's easier. I know this is still two layers, but for me getting over that hump of right here, if there's the two humps together, for me, it's a little bit harder and I tend to get a little more shift. So I, I open them. You don't have to, you could totally do it, you know, nest them together. If you're a quilter, you know what that means. If you don't, Google it. Um, yeah, it just means you push them like sideways like this, and they kind of come together. Okay, so that's what nesting is. If you're a quilter, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But not really necessary for cuddle. Not really necessary, but you do want to make sure that they're like flattish. Okay, this one is a little squirrelier, so I'm putting some pins in a different direction. I'm gonna do the same thing here because we've got the the skinny and the thick. Okay, so I'm just adding two along the top. So over here, I've got one along the top, two on the bottom. Over here, oh, I, do I see. Because I feel like this will move on me just a little more. All right. So now I think I've got enough pins. Is that, is that enough pins, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> There's always more. There's always room for more. Okay. we do the same thing. And I'm going to sew oh, right along here. The box. No. <laughs> That's okay. But if I had them, I would use them. Okay. Backstitch a little. And so sometimes when you're getting started, it'll get a little bit, uh, it can get a little stuck even if you start in. Using the stiletto will help because as I start to go, I can kind of push along here, along the edge. All right, I'm just going to stitch along this seam. So you saw I did the, like you said, the important parts first, and then I come back and do the other parts. I'm going to keep an eye on this because it's going to want to move on me. I know we mentioned it in the ingredients list. Mm -hmm. um, you're using a 9014 90, stretch needle. Yep. Um, and why a stretch needle versus a universal needle? Okay, so a stretch needle has a little bit of a ball point on it, and that lets it slide between the fibers of the knit rather than piercing the fabric. So um, whenever you're working with a knit fabric, which Cuddle is a knit fabric, then you want to use a ballpoint, a stretch, a jersey, uh, whatever is appropriate for the project that you're doing to keep the um, fabric from getting a hole in it. Okay. And also it has a tendency to sort of skip. The universal needles have a tendency to skip stitches, right? Because they actually... That's exactly a, what happens. There's a time when the needle actually wants to grab the, the thread of the fabric and because it's stretchy, yep. it basically gets in the way of the bobbin coming around and catching something like that something fancy that happens underneath yeah. the machine <laughs> yeah universal needles I know are a no-go universal needles you'll, get, you'll skip stitches and be yep. unhappy right exactly and that's what happens is like you can sometimes people will be like oh i always use a universal 
And I'm like, if you're doing something that your seam isn't going to get a lot of wear and tear or blah, 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 then you might be able to use that and you wouldn't have any issues. But for safety's sake, I recommend that you use the stretch because especially if you're doing top stitching and you skip stitches, it looks really ugly. Um, so we don't want to do that. Strong is one thing. Ugly is... It's, ugly is different. Right. Got it. I'm big on not having ugly top stitching. Okay. That was that's my, basically the only fancy stitching that gets it, that's ever really visible in these projects. So right. Everything else gets hidden down. It gets hidden. Exactly. Yeah. So on this side, I was able to get all of my seams open. Let's see what happened on the other side. Yeah. See, this is what happens sometimes. Oh. Dang it. Do you know what I do about it? Nothing. Oh, nothing. <laughs> okay <laughs> we're just gonna leave it so there's you know good intentions and then there's reality um so if it's really obnoxious so i will say that there have been times that i've been like oh i'm gonna take that out because i can feel it weird and i don't like it so this isn't my center seam if this were my center seam i would probably take it out and redo it because i can feel it knobby here because there's no seam allowance over here it's all right here Got okay, it. so it really is. I mean, it does nothing in the wearability of your pillow, but it's just in the feel of it. So, but that's my my bottom. So I don't care. So this one I'm going to try to be careful with. Okay, so now we're going to do one more seam. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to put these pins in at the intersections. So normally I tell you make sure to pin with it laying down is easier. But I will say that pinning the intersections is easier um, holding it up because they like to move okay. because the two layers like to do stupid things. So I like to hold it up. And then when I'm pinning this part, I'll lay it back down. I'm gonna look down the ends of it to make sure they're- Yeah, it's easier to see what I'm doing a little bit. Okay. So again, at the ends, and then we'll do across one more seam. So this project is great. We um, actually, if somebody come to the store can grab the other pillow, we'll show that one too, because they did one with larger squares. So you can do this with any size square, which I think is pretty fun, is that you could do this with, you know, five inch squares or 10 inch squares or, you know, hey, eight Karen, inch squares. Hey, Karen, hey, would you post a picture of that machinist stiletto that you have? I <laughs> see that comment and that sounds really interesting to me. Um, maybe if you have joined I Love Cuddle, you could post it over there for everybody to take a look at. That would be really cool. You guys know about I Love Cuddle Fabric, the mm -hmm. Facebook group? Yeah. yeah. Yay. There are like almost 17 or 18,000 cuddle enthusiasts yeah. over there. It's a bunch. Uh, I love it. And everybody is just really super supportive. And uh, a ton of our brand ambassadors are over there. Uh, and they're all willing to answer questions and help. And uh, I love getting to see everybody's new projects. So it's super fun. It's a great way to show off your your projects, what you're doing, and then ask questions. Like, there's a lot of people who say, you know, I have this issue that I'm having, or hey, do you know about this, you know, tutorial for this or that? But it's a great group. So yeah, I love cuddle uh, fabric is on Facebook. All right, one more time. You ready? Yep. Okay, let's do I'm it. I'm gonna jump a. You... Can you tell us what, how do you feel about the Wonder Clips versus the pins? Because we haven't really Dude. even gotten into Wonder, pin, wonder okay. Clips on this. This is where we walk a tightrope. <laughs> 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 I love Clover pins. I do not love them for holding Cuddle together when I needed to hold it tightly. Um, I'll show you why. If I can remember oh, you, when we're done, the clip, but the clips, the clips. Yeah. What did I say? You said wonder, pins. wonder clips. Oh, sorry. Wonder, sorry. sorry. Wonder clips. So um, the wonder clips, I'm just going to show you really quick because these are the wonder clips. So I love clover pins, clover wonder clips. I love as well, but they are a different breed. Okay. So these don't grip as tightly in my opinion. So if I want to clip the pieces together, I can pull them off really easily and I can also shove them. So that's what happens for me. Okay. Is they get moved and they shove. So some people swear by them and they love them and they've made them work for them. I have not been able to. And I feel like I am just fine with my pins. So, so you do have them right there and handy in your kit. There are times when you. Oh, there's absolutely times. But, uh, yeah. So when I'm trying to hold an intersection together, it's not one of those times. Got it. 
All right. So I love them for bindings and I use the jumbo clips for bindings and for top stitching, but I do not use them when I'm trying to hold seams together. Okay. Do you see that fancy little thing I just did right there? I know. Okay. You see it on the <laughs> next scene. Okay. So you can see that the, this is the digital or the dimple on top and you see how it wants to move around a little bit more. A lot of people start with this because it's really fun, but it definitely is a little, um, Squirrely is my word for this stuff. It just moves a little bit more than the other stuff because of the, the dimples in it. So if you're struggling with it, it's not you. It really is the fabric. So you're checking to make sure the seam was open underneath just there. Exactly, because this uh, is my center seam allowance. And if it's not, I'm just going to pop it back over with my stiletto. We'll check with the next one, too. I forgot. I should probably show you those little tricks. There's so much knowledge just in your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> It's just yeah. a lot of practice. All right. So I make sure that that's over there. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to push this over because this happens, right? And so we get over here and I'm going to look and I'll be like, oh, dang it. It's pushed this way. So all I do is just take my little stiletto, push it back. And then I'm going to hold it in place and catch it. And then I'll take that out. That stiletto is a finger saver. It is. It's a little miracle right there. I love it. It is a game changer for sure. And, you know, we talk about it a bunch on that I Love Cuddle group. We're like, it's a game changer. I'm like, it really is. Like, it changes how I've been able to work with the fabrics as well as other things when I'm doing, like, paper piecing and tiny piecing, bindings of all sorts. Okay, so this is going to be a hard one because I backstitch. It's like a habit for me. So this little thing, I programmed it so it'll do the lock, stitch, and cut. But I still backstitch because it's a habit. Got it. It's going to take some, while, some time for me to remember it's that It's not one. a problem that you're doing it, but it's sort of... It's, it's just a waste of, waste of effort. Got if it. I'm going to like make you know, it so that it does this fancy little thing for me, I should probably use it. Okay. All right. So here is my piece. Hopefully all of my naps are going in the right direction. We're not going to pet all of them. Just pretend. Okay. <laughs> all right. So now we've got our piece. So we've got this 16 patch. This is where you're trying to get to. And then we get to make it a pillow actually pretty darn quickly. So I'm going to fold this in half. This is something that happens sometimes. You leave the pins in. Okay. So I took the pins out. I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to sew up my side seams. All right. So when I'm doing this, again, I'm going to do this thing where I'm going to pin here. Okay, and I could, so I have two options here. I can, I can sew from my cut edge to what is my fold, also my seam, right? So I could sew from here to here. If this starts to push, though, this ends up in a weird spot in my middle. So I'm going to sew from this side to this side so that if it gets pushed a little bit, that just ends off the end and I just cut it off. Okay. Pretend it never happened. So, so it doesn't end up in a pucker. It just sort of runs the uh, runs any extra into your next seam allowance. And no one is the wiser. I'm not so wiser. that's a great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It also lets me when I'm sewing here that I'm going to start at this seam and sew down here instead of sewing over this. I'm just going to start sewing at this seam and bring it down. All right. So we're going to do a little double pinning here. I just get that in place. So um, those are working nicely on the sides. Happy about that. And I'll go back and do my little second row of pins just to keep that in place. So again, this is where if I pin this over correctly, the walking foot will slide right over this one and keep them in position. Okay. All right. By the way, I've completely lost the understanding of how this pillow is constructed. <laughs> Good. Now That's I, now what we I want. No idea what's happening. Like, what is she doing? It doesn't seem like a seam. It's magic. To, so. I know, it doesn't, right? <laughs> it will end up as a square, I promise. Okie dokie. Okay. I'm going to make sure that that's flipped over. It's easier if I try to flip it over before, long before I get there, but sometimes I forget until the very end. Okay. And if it kind of struggles through, you can, you can give it a little bit of a pull. Um, I have noticed with the Bernina, this one, I didn't have to change the um, presser foot pressure, but I can, and I've had to on a couple of things. So make sure that if your um, fabric isn't pulling through very well, that you check your presser foot pressure and kind of lower that. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and back. Oh, don't need to backstitch. <laughs> I'm going to get a little sign, a little post-it. Don't backstitch. Okay. <laughs> so this one, do you see it pushed forward just a little bit? 
Okay. So just the tiniest bit doesn't matter. But if it went over here, it would cause a little bit of a pucker right there. That so would be stuck in there. Got yeah, it. exactly. So I'm going to do the same thing here. And so from this edge to the corner. All right. So this is one of those things that really isn't like that important. It's just a little thing that makes it easier for me. So here I'm a little bit off. So these two seams came together. Don't care. Okay, we have your a half inch. Is, is a half an inch seam half allowance. An inch seam allowance. Over the place. Got it. So we've got lots of wiggle room. If it's a little off, it's okay. This is a hard thing for quilters to understand that it doesn't have to match. Because in quilting, you've got a quarter inch seam and sometimes a scant quarter, and there is no wiggle room at all. But with cuddle, we've got a half an inch, so there's plenty of wiggle room, and we just take advantage of that every opportunity we can. <laughs> like, just go with it. All right, so again, I'm going to start at my seam. Okay. And that's mostly so it doesn't fold and pucker in there weird. Okay, with my half inch seam allowance, do a little back stitch. I need my little demag um, demagnetifier. Is that what they're called? Uh, so the, sure. the fancy yes, right word. That's the, yes, the magnetifier. <laughs> that's exactly right. My dad would be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> he taught me those words. Yeah, I don't know. But something that will make it not magnetic. It's there. I can feel it. It's grabbing all the pins now. Which sometimes is helpful and sometimes not. Okay, so this is important is that I always see a little bit of fabric hanging out the side there when I'm using my uh, my walking foot, okay? So if you start to let it and see how it pushed, it just does it sometimes, even when you're good at what you're doing. Okay, so no now, backstitch. no backstitch. Yay! I remember that time. Thank you, thank you. I earned a treat for that one. Okay, <laughs> all right, huh. so now I have my little piece here, all right? So I'm gonna show you. Yeah, I don't know what happens next. In the pattern, this is where we are. Okay. Okay. So this is definitely one of those that visually it, it makes a lot more sense once you're doing it. So we have it in this position where we've sewn it. Now we're going to actually twist it the other way, but we're going to do a little stay stitching first because uh, if you've, you know, ever sewn with me before, I like to do a little stay stitching so that I can see where I'm going to sew my seam up. All right. This one, I've got dimple on both sides, which isn't, or a dimple on either one of these, which isn't ideal, but it's not the worst thing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark with my pins a, stay, a place that I'm going to stay stitch so that I can sew my uh, pillow up later. Wait, this, oh, is this the, the, where the turning hole? This is going to be, be where okay, the turning hole is going to be. I missed that. Got it. That's okay. It's exactly what this is. So I'm just marking it. This is going to be the turning gap right here. I feel like that's enough room. If I were going to use a pillow form, which you absolutely could, you would just want to make it bigger so that your pillow form could go in there easier. All right. So it would be over, you know, two of these instead of just one little bit. Okay. Got it. I noticed that you're not, um, this flower head pins, you don't really put them all the way in. You basically are only like using the first third yeah third sometimes separate. a little less than other times yes it's true and really it's because they're just if i stick it all the way in it holds down too much fabric and i'm more likely to pin myself so if they're up here it's just easier to control them yeah for sure okay so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to stay stitch between these pins on either side at a half an inch seam allowance so if this isn't making any sense to you right now just bear with me we're just going to do this it's just one layer and I'm just stitching a half an inch seam allowance. Okay, now it's gonna lock stitch even though I don't want it to, but it's okay. All right, the other thing that this fancy little Bernina does is that if I just push the go, it lowers the walking foot. See that? Oh, I remember you having to do that on the other machine by hand. Got yeah. It. Okay. The so go, <laughs> the go, the foot, you know, the pedal. <laughs> has a name I'm sure okay so it's kind of a nice thing is it'll just lower the foot for me and then start sewing all right so I've just got a little seam on either side there and you'll see what that's for here in a in second a, in a minute okay yeah. so now 
You see how it's become a little square? Oh, wow. That was all right. It's like magic. It really is. All right. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I, I was really into paper folding when I was a kid. So it might explain why I think this is so you... cool. How did we get here? <laughs> <laughs> so we had the 16 patch. Yeah. We folded it in half. Uh-huh. Okay. And then I just grab the corners and I bring it out. Oh, right, yeah, that was fancy. Isn't it? Got it. Okay. So there's the back of my pillow. There's the front of my pillow. Obviously the inside. All right. So I've got my stay stitching lines done. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew these together. And sew this corner. Okay, so again, I'm matching intersecting seams as well as I can. Would you show me that one more time? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It okay. feels like that's like one of the, it's almost like turning an infinity scarf in. It is right? a little bit like that. It's, okay. It's so we made, we made the 16 patch. Yep. Okay. So here's it. Here it is. There's 16 of them, four by four. And I fold it in half. Let me get that open. Okay, so then this was the, um, this is part of the, the 16, and then I fold it in half and sewed the side seams. Yep. Okay, then I'm going to grab the other center, front and back. Okay, yep. so there's my side, here's my front and back. Okay. I, I'm still pretty sure that was magic. Okay. Might have been. It's all right. You can rewind it. I'll rewind it and watch it again. I won't make you tell me to do it again. Especially as I start pinning again. It is kind of weird, but I promise it works. All right. You just got to grab those little corners and pull them out. And then it's just a little miracle. But it does make it a very quick and easy pillow. And like I was saying, this is a great scrap buster. So if you have scraps from a bunch of different blankets or just from, you know, a specific quilt that you've made, I think this is a great way of doing it. And with this one, we mix together um, the various like textures so that there's this the smooth, there's the sparkly kind, there's the dimple and there's the luxe where you could also do it where you just mixed colors like that. You can mix in, you know, cotton if you wanted to, or mix in um, flannels. Just make sure that if you mix in any other substrates that you wash those first, because they will shrink and this will not. Okay. So also this pillow, one of the perks about using a, um, a pillow form is that you could pull that out and then wash it. If you put this, um, you could wash this in the, washing machine sometimes the stuffing doesn't work quite as nicely afterward but um you you've, can absolutely wash and dry this you've added zippers to projects mm -hmm. before could you add a, a, mm -hmm. a an invisible zipper yep. right, right now basically in this this spot yep yep you totally could just along here like Let's put a little a zipper in. right across the back. You can yep. add a so this is one thing that we didn't we didn't really talk about too much. We talked to that I did I do back stitch and I almost always back stitch, um, and I think it comes from garment sewing more than anything. But these seams need to be back stitched. So when you're doing them, please back stitch because if you don't, these will start coming apart. Okay, especially because you're using a larger seam length or stitch length, these will start to like kind of come apart. So make sure that when you're sewing these together, these squares, you're backstitching. Got it. Okay. So I've got my pins this direction that tells me this is where I start and stop. Okay. Because I want to leave this open for my turning gap. And I've got those double pins. So that's where I'm going to sew. All right. One more time. And then I think that's it. We'll see. When I get to the other side and I'm like, oh, wait, one more step. Okay. Backstitch a little bit. And I'm just going to guide this through. So on here, this one, I have a little less, um, I have totally less control over which one is on top and which one on the bottom because they're going to switch around on me as I go across here. Okay, so I'm just going to do my best to make sure that it stays flat and that they feed together evenly. All right, if it doesn't work out perfectly, nobody cares. And it will just be inside your pillow anyway. Don't sew over any pins. Okay. Anybody who tells me that their grandma used to sew over pins, I'm like, your grandma did a lot of hard things that we don't have to do anymore, so let's not. Okay. 
it's not necessary and it's also bad. What happens is it sometimes hits that pin, it snaps your needle, and then flies at you. And you I, put your eye out. Yeah, yeah. It's true. <laughs> at the uh, at a class I had a few years ago, that happened. She didn't put her eye out, but she did go to the hospital. So, you know, it sort of scarred me. And I'm like, all right, no so, sewing over needles or so pins. What did you just do? I did a little L gap thing here, which you'll see in a lot of the patterns. We'll talk about it. So I sewed down here and then I turned. I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna put my put my needle down. So you turned off the edge of the fabric yep. across the seam allowance. Yep. So that's what I do on here. Each side of the turning hole to right. reinforce it. Yep. So I'm just stitching this there. So now I've stitched that one just like I stitched this here. Got it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lift my foot and pivot it. And so to the end. Okay, so make sure that that's flat, at least on this side. Okay. And make sure this should be nice and flat. So see, this is um, just the seam. I can kind of pull this taut so that it stays nice here. I'm going to sew all the way to the edge. Do a little back stitch. Oh, I don't need to, but I did it anyway. <laughs> See if I talk it through Bonus by the, by the third or fourth episode here, we'll we'll be all right. Okay, so now I can lay this down. New machine, new behaviors. It's true. Okay, so does that that's sort of making sense, oh, right? It makes all kinds of sense. Okay, now. so here's my little turning gap. I get it. I'm not I'm not going to clip any of my corners. So you absolutely could clip them if you want to. What I have found is that it just gets shoved in there and fills out the corner. It's fine. Okay, it's one less thing to cut. One less mess to make. I'm gonna stick that out there. You are more than welcome to use a little point turner. Stick that out there. So I tend to do this where I turn my corners first. I turn them inside first. So I'm gonna go ahead, pop that. And I can kind of push it out there, make sure that it's turned. Do the same thing here. Pop it out with my thumb and kind of push it out the rest of the way with the point turner, get it nice and turned. It won't be a very sharp corner because it's cuddle and it's soft. That's its whole point, is not sharp. Okay, so then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn this inside out. There we go. Okay, and I'll just come right through that hole, no problem. So like you said, you, you could absolutely do a zipper if you wanted to. You could do a larger hole and put in a 15 uh, inch pillow form on this one. If you're doing a larger pillow, it's not, it's gonna be a bigger pillow form, obviously. I don't have that math in my head, sorry. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clip my thread. Because that's obnoxious looking. There we go. All right, so now I can go ahead and stuff it and it becomes a pillow. All right, so stuffing, there's a couple of different kinds that I like. I probably should get some new little baggies from Fairfield. Um, they sent me these a couple of years ago and I've used them like crazy. So they're looking a little worn. This is called Silky Polyfill now. And this is just the regular polyfill, which most people have seen and have used. I will tell you that this is the stuff that I prefer is the Silky because it's much softer. Um, I'm going to show you, just pull out just a little bit. You can see the fineness of the fibers compared to the regular polyfill, which is a coarser fiber. You can probably see the difference on there, okay. All right, so this is pretty coarse. This is really fine. What, ma what, what that makes is that this stays um, thicker and this will smush down like crazy, okay? So this is cloud soft. Um, and I really love it. It's a little bit more expensive than the regular polyfill, but the end result is so much better. And so if you've had issues with um, it being clumpy or whatever, when you're trying to stuff it and trying to make really small pieces, I will tell you that the, um, the silky polyfill, I just shove it in there and I don't try to be careful with it at all. And it turns out fine. Okay. So here is the difference. Here is one that is with the, um, the royal silk. It's super squishy, which I love that you cannot use a ton of it and it still fills it out enough. And then this is with the um, the polyfill and you can see it's just a little, it's a little denser. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So it really is just depends on what you, what, what you want to do with it. Um, how soft do you want it? How much do you want to fill it? Um, it's probably about the same amount of stuffing, but it's a little different. The other thing you can do. So this little point, I will say, I did a really nice job with the point. Um, very proud of it. Look at that. Look at that. Here's another one. Oh, look at that. Woo. Two. Do I get three? Do I get three? Oh, that's pretty darn good. Not, not bad. Not bad. Not, not bad, bad at all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> the things we strive for, you know, those points are really nice. But I will tell you, here's another little secret. So if you are not very good at getting those points together, because you haven't had a lot of practice yet, you can put the Lux Cuddle in the center. So then you just fluff the seams and hide it. <laughs> or you stick a button. So you can then stick a big button on here and put button these together. And then kind of tuft it. Yeah. No and that will totally needle, hide it. No needle front to back, the whole exactly. Thing. So any of these places. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so any of these places here where the, um, the Lux Cuddle gets stuck in here. So that'll happen with the longer fibers. They'll get caught in your seam. And this is just my little stiletto here. And I'm just going to come back over here and I'm just going to fluff them out. Just scritch them. Okay. Scritch and just kind of right scritch out. it and then it's totally fine. So you could see that will totally hide any of your, your little issues that you might have. We had a question from okay. somebody who has seen you make a pillow before. Yeah. Oh, no. Why didn't you, <laughs> why didn't you do the dog ear trick? So, uh, because you can't really do it with this one. It was yeah, you would have to get it put together already, right? Yeah, you would have to get it into this position. And um, so I'm like, because this is that fun pillow. Like, the other ones are nice pillows. Um, so, you know, whatever your purpose is, I'm going to turn this inside out. So let me show you, because when we do it, if you haven't seen, we did, we've done the throw pillow before. And with that, I do. I, I, I. Taper down the corners mm -hmm. to get rid of the dog ears because I don't like the dog ears on my throw pillows. So at this point, this is my square. I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay, so here's my square of my pillow. And so if I was going to dog ear this or take the dog ears off, I'd have to transfer this down here and then re-sew this this way, which then takes off those perfect little corners because I would need to make sure I match it on both sides and that's too much work. It could certainly be done. It could be done, but I am not going to spend that much time but we're on a 15 inch work. pillow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I really like it the way that it is. Question, you, no. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the ways that I kind of manage it is that I don't overstuff it. So my pillows are kind of always a little understuffed and they stay a little square. If I shove more of the stuffing up into the corners, um, it'll get more of that It'll get more of the um, the poke up there. So the more stuffing that goes up there, the more it will poke out up here. If you were using a pillow form, how where would you leave the the, the stuffing hole for that? I would leave it across here. So I would do most of this. So I try not to let the, this go over a um, a seam. Like here, I'm doing it right between the seams. Got With it. this one, I would do it over this middle seam and keep this whole thing. And then you would have to hand sew this closed. Got it. Which is what you're about. You're going to need to do. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. My favorite part. Yeah. Not really. I don't mind hand sewing too much, but sometimes I'm like, isn't there a faster way? And not for a nice finish. So I'm going to do it this way. So I'm just taking a big hunk of thread and I'm going to try to thread it. But by the way, your your thread is pretty much always just regular medium gray on all your cuddle projects. At this point. It is. Yeah. I use the medium gray for most everything. Because you never oh. end up seeing the thread down inside of the nap so no and even in here like this is oh no that's the white thread never mind right. i was like you can't even see it uh but that's because it's white uh let me show you where's there's the hole so when i turn this so this is the one that i just made so there's the gray and it's like right in here and it kind of hides in there fairly well this one i can actually see it a little bit which is kind of nice i mean you can't really see it very well on camera but i can kind of see it okay <laughs> Yes, Linda, I know. She loves hand Heavens sewing. to Betsy. Okay. <laughs> well, I can't imagine zigzagging this. So what? I, this, is, this is my older one that I already had stuffed, and I'm going to hand sew this shut. So this little stitching line, what it does is it makes it just automatically turn in here at a half an inch. Oh, that was that mysterious line that you added that was, only on one layer of fabric at a time. Exactly. So what that does is it gives me a place, like a guideline, that I can then sew this. So I doubled up my thread. 
Okay, through the needle, doubled it up, knotted it, and now I'm going to come back over here, and I'm just going to do this back and forth thing. Okay, so I'm going to take a little stitch. I'm just going to do a ladder stitch, or I'm going to take a little bit here, a little bit there, go back and forth, and just use that line as my guide so that I have a nice half inch seam allowance. I started doing this because I noticed that it was hard to keep track of where the half inch was. It's very hard when it starts to curl on you and you can't really see where you're stitching. And then once you get that closed, you wanna pull this, I'm just gonna pull it, and it's gonna be nice and straight. If your seam kind of wobbles, your, this seam will look wobbly. All right, so that's what we're doing that for. All right, so I'm gonna keep sewing this, and then do you wanna tell them about the uh, the cuddle connection, and how they can watch that? Oh, um, sure, yeah, I can do that. Uh, so uh, Shannon Fabrics is now offering a couple of other live show experiences uh on youtube we are doing and facebook a, and on facebook you're right uh once a month uh arvin and julie the arvin is the the owner of shannon fabrics and julie is the general manager they uh share cuddle connection and that is a, basically a discussion about the history of shannon fabrics as a company and then also every week on wednesdays we share they they also do a show with new products and that's so that's all the new SKUs uh and the new textures of uh shannon fabric scuttle that are coming out so let me get this right every wednesday typically every wednesday at 10 a.m is that right no is it noon gosh i'm i'm missing i'm missing the date somebody's gonna have to put them in the comments sure i mean yeah cheryl or ellen can pop it up in there for us so yeah, right. I've, so I may, I may so have lost my, that's okay. Lost so my way. so the way to do it though, because honestly, I can't keep track of it either, is that you go to YouTube or to Facebook and get an alert for when we go live, and then it will just tell you. And so they share, yeah, about the different fabrics and products and all that good stuff. And they are great at about answering questions about really, really detailed, specific things about what, right. how the fabric is made, um, what what's it best for, what are they thinking about. Mm -hmm. Uh, down, all of yeah all of the inside yeah. scoop stuff that i always say like it's magic how they do that and they actually know how they do that so they can tell you but i'm just like i don't know they make really cool fabric <laughs> all right so i stitched all the way across i pulled it nice and taut now i did a little knot the last thing i want to do is i want to hide the thread in there what happens sometimes is if we cut this really tight we end up cutting off just a little bit of the knot and then it undoes and then you have to redo your, your stitching. So what I do is I take it, once I've knotted it, I'm gonna stick it back in here and I'm just gonna pull it out somewhere else randomly. Way, way, way away from the-, the And then I kind of push it down and cut it. And then that so tail is lost. It's just it. hidden in there somewhere and I'm not gonna accidentally cut it off. I'm not, it's not gonna come loose at all, okay? It's just in there. So that is how you make a sweet 16 pillow. That was pretty good, right? That's an easy, easy project. I think it's Hello. great for all sorts of things. Like I said, it's a great like to go with project. It's also great if you've got a bunch of scraps and you want a different way of doing it to be able to put some different um, fabrics together. Now I have three. So <laughs> we have a lot, just, you know, we have a lot of, um, a lot of cake pillows in the RV now, babe. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I see giveaways and uh, okay. back to the warehouse. That's right. All right. So speaking <laughs> of giveaways, we have one. And our winner for today, let me see. It is Vivian B. of Indiana. So Vivian, congratulations. Thank you so much for watching and for sharing. If you will send us a message, we will send you a free beginner box kit, which is super great and a wonderful way to get started working with the oh, fabrics. Nice. So that one has um, three one yard cuts and some of the tools that you need, like pins and needles and thread to get started making a bunch of cuddle projects. And there's six of them in the box that you can make with the fabric that's there. It's fabulous. So we will send you that. Um, don't want to let you forget. Make sure that you join the I Love Cuddle group. And then you can watch those cuddle connections. I had a couple other things. Let me remember. Um, oh, yes. It is the 30th, right, of August. It is the, I can't believe it's the end of August. I don't know if anybody else is like, where did, and, like, where did it go? I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's gone. It is basically fall. So September, if you don't all know, September is National Sewing Month. And if you have followed Shannon Fabrics for a while, you know we make a big deal of it. 
If you haven't, I would suggest that you sign up for our newsletter because there'll be an announcement in a couple of days that is going to be a big, big deal. So make sure that you sign up for the newsletter at shannonfabrics.com. Get on that one. Um, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> It's a big, big deal. It's a big, big deal. Um, so go sign up for that. You'll want to be in on the uh, the inside scoop on that one for sure. We are back on tour, obviously, and we will be Hawk and I will be on the road for the next sixteen weeks wow. through all of. Wow. Yeah, break, break, break. <laughs> so. We are going to be on the road, um, yeah, until the middle of December. So if you can put up the schedule, Cheryl, we can look at all the places that we're going. Next up, next week, we're going to be in Chesaning, um, Chesaning, Michigan. Is that the right state? Um, yep. At Creative Passions. So if you are in Michigan, make sure that you come see us up there. Here's a nice list of all of the shops we're going to go to. It's a ton of them all over the United States. So Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota, <laughs> Iowa, Kansas, Texas, Washington, Oregon, and back to California. So we will be going all over. If you want to know specifics on where we're going to be, that was one list. But you can also go to Shannon Fabrics and if you go to um, scroll down to the bottom, whether you're on your phone or the desktop and go to community and then sew together Tuesday, it will give you a list of all of the classes. So for every stop that we do, we not only do a sew together Tuesday live, but then we also teach classes. So for almost all of them, I have at least two and sometimes three other classes that I'm teaching there at the shop. So make sure that you check that out on the Shannon Fabrics website. You can check it out, see what all the classes are and then find out the stores and sign up through them. Okay, so you sign up through each individual store that you want to come visit because um, they're all doing it a little bit differently. Anything else I missed? Can we just do a huge shout out to the biggest audience we've ever had. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much to Pins and Needles for kicking off this season um, with a bang. And I love it. So thank you so much for sticking around. Thanks for sewing a so sweet little pillow with me uh, or sweet 16 pillow with me. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next week with a little blanket to go along with it. So join us uh, next week in Chesney and Creative Passions. Until then, happy sewing.